good afternoon everyone sir my name is evma shivanaga prasad my qualification is mtech and my designation is assistant professor working in sri vasavi engineering college tripura department so today i am going to discuss the topic is design considerations in distribution system that is radial and ring main systems so intended learning outcomes that is after completion of this lecture the learners will be able to understand radial distribution system and similarly understand ring main distribution system okay so this is the ilos intended learning outcomes so design considerations in distribution system so in this feeder and distributors are there so feeder feeder means a feeder is designed from the point of view of its current carrying capacity okay so feeder means it is designed from the point of view that is current carrying capacity while the voltage drop consideration is relatively unimportant it is because voltage drop in a feeder can be compensated by means of voltage regulating equipment at the substation so this is about feeder so feeder means we will consider here only the current carrying capacity but not voltage drop consideration because in the substation the voltage will be compensated by using voltage regulating equipments means voltage drop in a feeder can be compensated by means of voltage regulating equipment at the substation therefore voltage drop in this case is relatively unimportant therefore we will consider only current carrying capacity in this feeder design considerations of feeder and next one is distributor so a distributor is designed from the point of view of the voltage drop in it so here we will consider voltage drop so it is because a distributor supplies power to the consumers and there is a statutory limit of voltage variations at the consumer terminals so the voltage variation there is a statutory limit that is plus or minus 6% of rated value and the size and length of the distributor should be such that voltage at the consumers terminals is within the permissible limits i repeat again the size and length of the distributor should be such that the voltage at the consumers terminals is within the permissible limits and one more point is here statutory limit of voltage variations is plus or minus 6% of rated value so in this distributor we will consider the voltage drop whereas in the feeder we will consider the current carrying capacity so this is the main design considerations in distribution system in feeder and distributors and next topic connection schemes of distribution system so what are the various connection schemes used in the distribution system there are first one is radial second one is ring main or this is also called as a loop a loop type and third one is interconnected system but uh, in this session we will i am going to discuss only the two main topic that is radial and ring main or loop type distribution systems so before going to discuss about uh, radial let's see the various factors affects the selection of primary feeder rating various factors affecting the selection of primary feeder rating they are first point is nature of load connector so what type of the nature of the load which is connected either it is resistor inductor or capacitor whatever it is second point is load density of the area served load density of the area served either it is a hexagonal or square shape area likewise next one is growth rate of the load growth rate of the load so as the year passes uh, thereby the population will be increased therefore the growth rate of the load also similarly increased the need for providing spare capacity for emergency operations so the need there is a need for providing extra capacity or spare capacity for emergency operations in order to avoid the interruption of supply next one is type of circuit used or similarly cost of the circuit construction employed next one is design and capacity of the substation involved design of the substation similarly capacity of the substation involved and next point is the type of regulating equipment used the type of regulating equipment used and next one is quality of service required and continuity of service required so these are the various factors while selecting a primary feeder rating 
So based upon this, we will discuss about radial ring main systems, distribution systems. So first one is radial type primary distribution feed. First one. So this is distribution substation low voltage bus, LV bus. So this is of course a feeder breaker. Next primary main feeder. So from primary main feeder, there is a transformer fuse which is connected to distribution transformer. So distribution transformer uh, will from dis secondary of the distribution transformer, secondary winding, we will connect to the consumers through service mains of course. So laterals, I mean, thereby the laterals are again subclassified into sublaterals, distributor wires thereafter again. So lateral fuses. So distribution substation, low voltage bus, feeder breaker, primary or main feeder, transformer fuse and distribution transformers. So this is the design of a radial type primary distribution feeder. And come to the operation, I mean, simplest and lowest cost. And therefore, the most common form of primary feeder is radial type primary feeder. So it's a simple, lowest cost, and therefore we will use mostly the radial type primary feeder. The main primary feeder branches into various primary laterals that in turn separates into several sublaterals to serve all the distribution transformers. Next, in general, the main feeder and sub feeders are of three phase three wire or three phase four wire circuits. Similarly, and the laterals are three phase or single phase. Next point, the current magnitude is the greatest in the circuit conductors that leave the substation. The current magnitude continually lessens out. Lessens out means reducing. Lessens means, lessens means here reducing. The current magnitude continually lessens out toward the end of the feeder as laterals and sublaterals are tapped off the feeder. Sublaterals are tapped off the feeder. Next, usually as the current lessens, means as the current reduces, the size of the feeder conductors is also reduced. However, the permissible voltage regulation may restrict any feeder size reduction, which is based only on thermal capability, that is current carrying capacity of the feeder. This thermal capability means current carrying capacity of the feeder. The reliability of service continuity of radial primary feeders is low. I repeat again, the reliability of service continuity of the radial primary feeders is low. So this is a major drawback in this case. So a fault occurred at any location on the radial primary feeder such that it causes a power outage for every consumer on the feeder unless the fault can be isolated from the source by a disconnecting device such as fuse, sectionalizer, disconnecting switch or reclosure. And next one is modified radial type primary feeder. So see here, this is feeder one load area, this is, and this is feeder two load area, this part, this entire part. And third one is here it is, this is feeder three load area. So these feeder load areas one, two, and three are connected by tie switches. By right? using tie switches, we are going to connect the feeder one load area, feeder two load area, and feeder three load area. So within the feeder again, there are several sections will take place. So those sections will be connected by using sectionalizing switch. So whenever the fault occurs, we will open the sectionalizing switches. Similarly, here also tie switches. So let's see. A modified radial type primary feeder with tie switches and sectionalizing switches are used to provide fast restoration of service to customers or consumers, you can say, by switching unfaulted sections of the feeder to an adjacent primary feeder or feeders. I repeat again. A modified radial type primary feeder with the tie and sectionalizing switches are used to provide fast restoration of service to customers by switching unfaulted sections of the feeder to adjacent primary feeder or feeders. The fault can be isolated or you can say separated by opening the 
associated or appropriated disconnecting switches or devices on each side of the faulted section the fault can be isolated by opening the associated disconnecting devices on each side of the faulted section so this is the, about the modified radial type primary feeder by using tie and sectionalizing switches and next one is radial primary feeder with express feeder and back feed so here we are using this express feeder which is connected in between substation and load center so this is called as express feeder the feeder which is connected between substation and load center is called as here express feeder for main uh, uninterruptible services in order to maintain a uh, uninterruptible service we will use this express feeder so the express feeder means which is connected the feeder which is connected in between substation and load center let's see that is the point here the section of the feeder connected between substation low voltage bus and load center of the service area is called an express feeder so no sub feeders or laterals are allowed to be tapped off the express feeder so we are not allowing here to tap off this express feeder however sub feeders are allowed to back feed from load center towards the substation so it's called back feed so what are the advantages disadvantages and the applications of uh, radial distribution system let's see so this system is simple in construction easy to operate and less maintenance is required so it is simple in construction easy to operate and less maintenance is required in case of radial and similarly the capital cost involved is very less as no extra length of line and switching arrangements are required and simplicity of analysis and predictability for performance will be there in the case of radial distribution system and main drawback or disadvantage in the case of a radial is it has very poor service reliability to consumers so this is the main drawback so service reliability will be very poor because if any one of the feeder becomes faulty if any one of the feeder becomes faulty then the supply through that feeder has to be disconnected and restored when the fault is removed so this is the main drawback in the case of uh, radial feeder and application so where we are going to use or apply in the in the distribution system that is this system is applicable for rural areas so mainly this uh, radial system radial distribution system will be used in rural areas having low density of loads uh, which involves long distances too so main drawback in the application is rural areas we will use this uh, radial distribution system which is having low density of loads so this is about radial next case is loop type primary feeder or you can say ring main so this is distribution substation lv bus and thereafter feeder breaker and thereafter load points so our load points will be there lateral sub laterals so sectionalizing disconnect switches will be there of course and a class that is loop tie disconnect switch will be there loop tie disconnect switch the fault occurs in any one of this section then this loop tie disconnect switch will be opened in order to in order to avoid the interruption for the remaining consumers so this is the advantage of using this uh, loop tie disconnect switch which is used in this loop tie primary feeder of course the distribution transformer locations in order to feed the consumers so let's see the loop tie so loop tie primary feeder that loops through the feeder load area and returns back to the bus means lv bus substation lv bus of course sometimes the loop tie disconnect switch is replaced by a loop tie breaker also due to the load conditions means based upon the load conditions in either case the loop can function with the tie disconnect switches or breakers normally open or normally closed usually the size of the feeder conductor is kept the same throughout the loop means the size of the feeder conductor is kept the same throughout the loop it is selected to carry its normal load plus the load of the other half of the loop also so this arrangement provides two parallel paths 
or you can say two parallel feeders, whatever it is, from the substation to the load. When the loop is operated with normally open tie breakers or disconnect switches, okay, this arrangement provides two parallel paths from substation to the load. So this is the main point. Next, a primary fault causes the feeder breaker to the to be open. Whenever fault occurs, then the feeder breaker will be open. So the breaker will remain open until the fault is isolated or separated from both directions. The loop type primary feeder arrangement is especially beneficial to provide service for loads where high service reliability is important. So whenever a high service reliability is needed or necessary, then we will go for the loop type primary feeder arrangement in order to provide continuity of supply for those particular loads. In general, a separate feeder breaker on each end of the loop is preferred. Despite the cost involved, we can make a separate feeder breaker on each end of the loop. And the parallel feeder paths can also be connected to separate bus sections in the substation and supplied from separate transformers. So this is about loop type primary feeder. And let's see the advantages of a loop type primary feeder. It is more economical than other systems. It is very reliable as each distributor is fed through two feeders. Here in this case, it is very reliable. Each distributor is fed through two feeders. So this is, uh, this is why the reliability is high in this case of a loop type. The flexibility of the system is more compared to other systems. Fault in any section can be isolated without disturbing other sections, means other consumers. It is used for long distance bulk load applications. Why? Because due to this having high reliability, we are using for long distances bulk load applications. And saving in copper is maximum in this system. And last point is there are less voltage fluctuations at consumer terminals. There are less voltage fluctuations at consumer terminals. So these are the advantages of this loop type and drawbacks are the magnitude of fault current is more compared to radial system. The magnitude of fault current is more compared to radial system and it requires high degree of protection to ensure continuity of supply. So it needs a high degree of protection to ensure continuity of supply. And one more drawback is initial cost is high in the case of loop type compared to radial and applications. So it is used mostly where continuous supply is needed. That is mainly, mostly in uh, militaries, similarly hospitals where uh, uninterrupted power supply is needed. So in this case, we will use, we will use or we can go for the usage of ring main or loop type distribution system. So these are, this is about ring main, loop type or loop type and radial type, of course modified and a radial primary feeder with express feeder. So factors affecting the primary feeder, so on so. So this is about so design considerations in distribution system, radial and ring main system. So thank you, sir.